Hello! Hi everybody! It's Dr. Mitzi. Um, I'm gonna give people a couple of seconds to come on in the room if you want to join me tonight. Today, since Christmas season has officially started, I am listening to one of Take Six's Christmas albums. For those of you who don't know about Take Six, they are one of the most amazing acapella groups ever. So one of my goals in life is to learn every part to one Take Six song. I don't know if I'll ever achieve that, but they are amazing. So it's the most wonderful time of the year, which it is. Um, and we're listening to Take Six tonight. One of my favorite, favorite, favorite groups. So, hi there. Thank you guys for tuning in. I am going to turn take six down a little bit um, until we get started. Um, I am so excited to be with you guys tonight. Hi there. Hi, Diane. Thank you for tuning in. I am Dr. Mitzi Joy Williams. I am a board certified neurologist and multiple sclerosis specialist. And my goal is to engage, educate, and empower people living with MS and those affected by MS to become an active part of their healthcare team um, and to live their best life, as the song says. So I'm so, so excited. Hi there. Uh, I'm so excited to be with you guys tonight. I took last week off since it was Thanksgiving and I almost didn't come tonight because um, I've got a little bit of jet lag. For the, those of you who follow me on uh, Facebook or IG, I just got back from a wonderful trip to Paris, which I was really blessed to be able to take my mom and my mother-in-law and my aunt and we had an amazing time but we walked and walked and walked and i am worn out um but i was not gonna miss spending time with you guys for anything so again take six is our christmas song of the night it's the most wonderful time one of the best christmas albums ever if you love acapella music if you love music take six is amazing i have probably every album they've ever made all right, so we are going to tune down take six and get started with our topic tonight. For those of you who missed the first couple minutes, I'm Dr. Mitzi Joy Williams. I'm a board certified neurologist and MS specialist, and my goals are to engage, empower, and educate people living with MS and those affected by MS um, to become an active part of their healthcare team. I also love to talk about research and the importance of being involved in clinical research to help improve our understanding of MS and to help us work toward finding a cure for this disease. Um, so tonight's topic, thank you all for chiming in uh, with your different suggestions for topics. So obviously I won't be able to cover everything tonight, but I had about four or five people that wanted to hear about pain in MS. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that and we might talk just a little bit about THC, but I'm going to have to probably dedicate a separate video to that topic. So, all right, if everybody is ready, we are going to go ahead and dig in and get started. All right, so let's talk about pain, which was a very appropriate topic um, because many of my patients do have difficulty with pain. So back in the day, we used to tell people that MS didn't involve pain, but over time, we as a scientific community, and I'm sure those of you who are living with MS know that that is not necessarily necessarily the case. It's actually thought that about 60% or more, maybe even 70% of people with MS experience some type of pain at some point during the course of their disease. And what I'm going to talk a little bit about tonight is several different types of pain that people can have with MS. We'll talk a little bit about ways that those are treated and we'll talk a little bit about the effects of that on someone's overall health and well-being. So, when we talk about pain with multiple sclerosis, remember MS is an autoimmune disease where the immune system attacks the myelin or the coating of the nerves. So basically when those nerves are not functioning in the brain or in the spinal cord, they result in dysfunction in different areas of the body. Um, many of the symptoms of pain can be related to lesions in the spinal cord, but they also can be related to lesions in the brain. So when we want to talk about pain, let's break it down in a couple of different types. So one of the most common types of pain that we see is nerve pain or neuropathy type pain. Many times when people think of neuropathy, they think of diabetes, which also causes a similar type of pain, but it's for a different reason. With diabetes, the problem is the nerves, the peripheral nerves 
after they come out of the spinal cord. So people have problems with the, the nerve endings actually in their arms or legs, and that's what's causing them to have pain versus with MS, the problem where the lesions are central. Remember, it affects the central nervous system, brain, spinal cord, and optic nerves. And so the nerve pain is related to lesions very often in the central nervous system, okay? So ner nerve pain or neuropathic pain comes in a couple of different varieties or flavors, so to speak. Um, people often describe it as a burning pain, right? They feel like something's on fire. I actually have a slide deck that I use to talk about symptoms of MS where I have somebody that looks like they're walking on hot coals because that's often what people say that it feels like. So it can be kind of a burning pain. For some people, it's a numbness and tingling. Like if your leg falls asleep and it wakes up, if you've ever had your leg fall asleep, you know, when it wakes up, it feels like it's kind of burning and, and it hurts a little bit before the feeling comes back. Well, for some people with MS, it feels like that pain, but the feeling doesn't really come back. Um, so that's kind of another description that people have of nerve pain. Um, and there are a variety of others. Sometimes people feel like it's an aching or a nagging type pain, um, but the most common are the burning and the numbness and the tingling. And for some people, it's numbness or absence of feeling. So that's one type of pain that many people with MS experience, okay? Another type of pain that maybe many people experience is spasticity. And if you watch any of my videos, I talk a lot about spasticity, primarily because I used to have a really big spasticity clinic when I was in Augusta at the Augusta MS Center. Um, and so spasticity can be like a cramping pain. For some people, it feels like a tugging or an aching, like a pulling at the joints. Um, and then um, there are special types of spasticity that affect many people with MS. One type is called the MS hug, right? So if you've done any type of research or looked up MS or symptoms of MS, you may have heard of the MS hug. Most of the time we think a hug sounds very friendly and we usually like hugs, but this is a hug that we don't like. So it's a squeezing pain that is often kind of in the torso or chest area. Um, and many people say it feels like a vice grip or it feels like something is kind of squeezing them like a girdle um, that's too tight for the ladies because I'm sure probably the guys don't wear a lot of girdles, right? Uh, but uh, it's like a squeezing pain kind of around the chest or abdomen and that is a form of spasticity. Another uh, kind of special form of spasticity is uh, tonic spasm. So some people will have these type of spasms that may affect one side of the body. In some cases, they can be mistaken for seizures. So like one side of the body will kind of contract and spasm and it'll just kind of occur off and on, off and on, off and on, right? Um, so that's a certain type of spasticity that can also occur with MS. So neuropathic pain or nerve pain, right? Spasticity is another type of pain that we just kind of talked about. Another type of pain is muscle pain. So some people will actually have pain in the muscles um, that's a little bit different from the cramping that we think of as spasticity and that's often related to when people have weakness or maybe have difficulty walking or maybe because of other symptoms they may have difficulty with the posture so as a result um, you know if you're walking you know improperly or if you have weakness that causes you to drag something you can have pain in the muscles as related to the other symptoms or other issues that you have with mobility or movement and then there are a couple of other types of pain and I won't go into a lot of detail about these because we probably will also need a separate video to discuss these but people can also have headaches so headaches are very common with MS um, we believe that over 50% of people uh, with MS well not over 50% but the most common uh, types of headaches that we see are migraine and tension headaches and migraine occur more commonly in people with MS and they actually occur maybe about three times more commonly in people with MS than in the general population. So headaches can be very common with MS. Most typical is migraine, uh, which many people who don't have MS also have migraines, including myself. <laughs> um, and then also trigeminal neuralgia. That is a special type of facial pain um, that is related to a nerve um, called the trigeminal nerve that has three parts. There's one part here, there's one part kind of here in the middle of your face, and then there's one part here at the bottom. And so if there are disruptions in the uh, pathways for that nerve, people will often have a severe, severe pain 
um, that affects the face. It can often be triggered by things like chewing. Sometimes something can touch the face like cold air and it's very severe. Okay. So, um, it's very severe and sometimes it can be difficult to treat. So trigeminal neuralgia is a type of facial pain that can occur with MS as well. And then just one special type of, uh, pain going back to neuropathic pain that I forgot to mention is Lermit sign. So Lermit sign is a very typical symptom that can occur with MS. It often is related to lesions in the spinal cord. And basically what happens is when someone flexes their neck like this, they get an electric shock, usually down their neck and down their back, and sometimes it can go in the arms. This can also occur with people who have um, other types of spinal cord disease. For instance, um, I had a uh, disc or a herniated disc or slip disc in my neck that was pressing on my spine and I actually had their meat sign, um, which, uh, you know, for those who have it on a regular basis, um, I definitely can understand it, it is a very uh uncomfortable thing. And so I kind of described it like those old cartoons. I used to love to watch Tom and Jerry. Um, I guess I might be dating myself a little bit, but I used to love to watch Tom and Jerry. And when it would happen to me, I felt like it felt like Jerry took Tom's uh, tail and stuck it in an electric socket. Like if you saw the cartoons, like Jerry used to take his tail, stick it in an electric socket, and like every hair stood on end and he was looking like that. That's what their meat sign felt like to me. Um, and I've had patients that say that's what they uh, think it felt like as well. So it's a very specific type of nerve pain due to a lesion in the spinal cord. All right, so those are the most common types of pain that we see with MS. Again, the neuropathic pain can be a burning, a numbness or tingling, that pain like that leg or like that arm or leg is waking up. Also can be kind of a tugging or pulling pain. Um, also, their meat sign, that sign where you flex your neck and you get the electric shock, get the zinger. Um, that is a part of neuropathic pain. Then there's spasticity or spa um, spasms, which we talk about in a lot of my videos. Um, with a cramping pain, a tugging, a pulling. Um, special types of spasticity include the MS hug, which is that tightness around the abdomen or around the chest that feels like a girdle that's too tight, um, or for some people, feels like a rubber band or a vice grip. Um, and if it's very severe, sometimes people have the sensation that they have a little bit of difficulty breathing, but it's not actually a problem with their lungs. It's more a problem of that sensation of tightness um, around the chest. And then also tonic spasms which can be on one side of the body and may be mistaken for seizure. And then we talked about muscle pain, which can occur if you're having weakness or difficulty with movement or mobility or posture, and it causes you to kind of injure um, or uh, affect the muscles on one side because you're compensating for weakness on another side. And then finally, headaches, migraine being the most common, and then trigeminal neuralgia, which occurs in about 5% of people with MS, but is much more common in people with MS than in the general population, okay? So what are the overall effects of pain? Um, so just in general, like it sucks, it hurts, right? Um, so pain um, is difficult because it can interfere with daily life. Depending on the severity of the pain or the type of pain, um, sometimes it may interfere with people's ability to work um, on their previous jobs um, before they were diagnosed. Also, it can cause depression if it's very severe or undertreated or inadequately treated. Um, and in addition, um, it certainly can um, affect someone's willingness to kind of participate in their regular daily activities, depending on where the pain uh, occurs or what type of pain it is. So pain has a lot of effects aside from just the actual symptom itself. And it, it can really affect um, or decrease someone's quality of life, um, whether or not they have MS, but especially if they have multiple sclerosis. So what can we do about it or how do we approach or how do we treat pain? So there are a lot of different ways to treat pain. Um, it's very important to remember that I generally say medication can play a part, but also you as a patient or as a person living with MS also play a part. So no medication takes away the part that we play in improving our own health. And in some cases, medication may not be the answer to the issue that we're having. So how do we treat pain? So we have to approach it from a, a couple of different angles. So number one, we have to try to identify the source or the type of pain. One of the difficulties with treating um, pain 
um, with certain medications like opioids. Um, you know, everyone is very aware of the opioid epidemic. Um, but one of the difficulties with treating um, pain with those types of medications is that those types of medications often aren't specific. So what I try to do when I see my patients is I try to identify what type of pain are you having, right? Because that affects our approach. Are you having nerve pain? Are you having spasms? Okay, are you having muscle pain? For many of my patients, they also have joint pain. Um, and also remember that you can have pain for other from other causes besides the MS, right? So people with MS also may have diabetes. They may have peripheral nerve pain. People with MS can also have degenerative disease. So they may have pain related to that. Um, and so we have to try to identify to figure out what we're treating, okay? So step number one is to identify the type of pain that we're having, and that will help us make a more specific approach to how we treat it or how we improve those symptoms. So one of the things that I often recommend is keep a little diary, right? Because if you're in severe pain, sometimes it's hard to sit there and say, well, I think the pain is, you know, this type of nature, you know, so you may not be kind of keeping notes um, if you're in a severe um, painful episode, but try as much as you can to jot a couple things down about the pain, if there's anything that brings it on, if there's anything that makes it better, so that when you go to the doctor, when you talk to the doctor about it, you can have an informed conversation. And also, if you have a family member who's there with you and who kind of witnesses some of the things you have difficulty doing because of it, that's also very important to add that piece of information. So once we identify the type of pain, then that can help with the approach. So for instance, let's start with nerve pain. So there are a couple of different ways that we treat nerve pain. Uh, there are a couple of different types of medications that we use to treat nerve pain. One of the most common types of medications that we use to treat nerve pain are antidepressants. Now, if I give a patient um, or one of my uh, patients an antidepressant for nerve pain, I always warn them and tell them, if you look at the bottle or if you look at look at this look this up online it's going to say it's an antidepressant but i'm not necessarily giving it to you for anti for depression i'm giving it to you for nerve pain so many of our drugs that we use for one type of thing are often also used for something else so antidepressants are very commonly used for nerve pain okay also, anti-seizure or anti-convulsant medication. So many of our medications that we use for epilepsy or for people who live with seizure are also used to treat nerve pain, and many of them can be very effective. It's important to sit down and talk with your doctor about side effects because each of these medications can have potential side effects. And we also want to, we always want to manage the benefits with the side effects, okay? So we want to make sure that you're able to still function and do as much as possible and we try to treat the pain um, as well as we can. So antidepressants, anti-seizure medications, okay, um, are often very helpful with neuropathic or nerve pain. If we're talking about spasticity or spasms, there are anti um, there are anti uh, uh, spasticity agents or muscle relaxants that are often very helpful to treat this type of pain. And again, sitting down and talking with your doctor and talking about which one may be the right one for you um, is the most important uh, thing to make a specific plan uh, for the issues that you're having. Okay, now the difficulty with most of those medications is that they often make you sleepy. So sometimes you have to work with your doctor to either try maybe a long acting form of one of these medications or um, make the timing of the medication so that it may be at nighttime um, or make some of those adjustments because they often do make you sleepy. So as we've talked about in some of our previous videos, we have to be careful because fatigue is a symptom of MS. So we have to make sure that the medicines that we're using to treat symptoms such as pain don't significantly worsen the fatigue and still decrease your quality of life. So it's kind of like walking a tightrope. Uh, so we don't want to go too much over this way and we don't want to go too much over to that way. Okay. So antidepressants and anticonvulsant medications or anti-seizure medications are used for neuropathic pain. 
for spasms, muscle relaxants are often used, and some of our anti-seizure medications can also help um, spasticity, right? If we're talking about muscle pain, again, some of our anti-spasticity medicines can help. Um, if we're talking about muscle or joint pain, sometimes anti-inflammatory medicines can help. So again, it just depends on a holistic approach with you and your physician. Now, there are some cases where people can't tolerate some of the medications, or there's some cases where the medications don't work. In those cases, there are sometimes procedures that may help decrease pain and also decrease the need for medications. I very commonly refer my patients to pain clinics, um, not necessarily for pills, but to see if there are any interventions that may help. For instance, for some types of pain, epidurals may help. So epidurals where they do a steroid injection um, it can help with some forms of nerve pain. Also, there are procedures where they can do trigger point injections in the areas that may be very tight or be very spastic. Um, also, there are um, procedures where they can um, affect or uh, burn the nerve endings so that the pain is decreased. And then there are cases, for instance, with people with very severe spasticity where they actually can have a pump implanted that can deliver medicine over a continuous basis. So, um, for instance, if people have very bad spasms, there is a, a pump that can be inserted that sends the medicine right to the nerve endings so that you don't have to take the medicine by mouth, which makes you sleepy, and the medicine can go exactly where it needs to go. There are also pain medicines that sometimes can be put into those types of systems and can be adjusted by the doctor and, again, decreases the need for you to take medicines by mouth. Um, and also decreases the side effects of medicines taken by mouth. Now that is obviously not a first choice, okay? So we try to use other things before we do any type of surgery or any type of procedure or intervention. Now, let's go back and dial back to talk about what you can do, right? Um, so certainly, as I said, there are medications that can help, but there are also things that you can do. One of the things that's very important to recognize is that um, mood, including depression and anxiety, um, can have a huge effect on a person's experience of pain. So people, for instance, if you have, let's say, headaches, if you have headaches and you get very stressed out, then guess what? You often will have an increase in your headaches or maybe they may be more painful. It doesn't necessarily mean that the stress is causing the headaches, but your experience of those headaches is altered by the stress depression or anxiety. So it's very important to address any mental health issues um, that you may be having that may affect your experience of pain. It's also important to uh, work on coping mechanisms and there are a variety of different ways to do that. I have um, some patients who participate in things like biofeedback, which may help um, with their coping mechanisms. Sometimes people participate in some type of counseling that may help with their coping mechanisms. Oftentimes people will do things like yoga, um, you know I'm a big fan and big proponent of yoga. People will also do things like meditation, all right? So there are different things that you can do to affect your mindset, which may help um, improve your experience of pain and ability to cope with it. Also, support systems are very important. Um, so when people have good support systems, that often will help them in coping with pain symptoms. Um, and again, other things like massage may help, especially for things like spasticity. And in some cases, acupuncture may help. So there are a variety of different things. Some people also use uh, chiropractors um, who employ different techniques um, to help, as well as physical therapy, right? So there are things that you can do naturally that may help with pain, um, as well as working in conjunction with your physician um, to talk about ways um, to improve pain symptoms. And so the last thing that I'm gonna talk just for a few seconds about is a THC because a lot of people ask me about it. Now, I'm probably going to also have to dedicate a separate lecture to this, but many people ask about THC for the use of pain with multiple sclerosis. So let me be very clear that THC or other forms of THC, CBD oil, um, th they are not a treatment for the autoimmune process of multiple sclerosis, right? So they do not affect the immune system, okay? 
Um, there is not as much research as we would like about the use of THC um, just because it's now just becoming legalized in some states. Federally, it still is illegal, but there are some states um, that have legalized the use of it um, for different conditions, including multiple sclerosis. So from the limited research that we have, um, much of which was done with um, the uh, oil forms of cannabinoids. Um, so much of, uh, much of the research that we have shows that there may be some improvement in spasticity. However, the interesting thing is that uh, in the studies that looked at spasticity, it was the patient's um, feeling of spasticity that was decreased. However, when the exam was performed in many of those studies, there wasn't really a change in their physical condition, but people did feel like their spasticity was decreased. And there also have been studies looking at nerve pain. Um, I think that there's a lot more work that needs to be done in this area. The most common form of THC that uh, my patients use is the smoked form of THC, um, which there really is not a lot of research on to date. Um, but I think that a lot of people are looking into this. I have seen some people who have had very positive results. I do not recommend off the bat that everyone do that. Again, it's important to sit down with your physician and come up with a plan um, that is right for you. Um, and everybody is different. But I think that certainly it's important to explore a variety of different options to see what is the best option to treat the pain that you have with multiple sclerosis. So in summary, a couple of different types of pain that are very common with MS include nerve pain, remember burning, um, for some people that uh, learn meat sign where they get the electric shock down their back, kind of like Jerry um, sticking Tom's tail in the socket from Tom and Jerry. Um, then there's also spasticity, most commonly um, cramps, but also people have the MS hug, that banding around their chest, that tightness or that vice grip or that girdle. Also, people can have the tonic, tonic spasms on the right, on one side of the body, okay, that may be mistaken for seizure. Also, we see muscle pain and we see joint pain. We can see head Headache, most commonly migraine, as well as trigeminal neuralgia, a very severe pain in the face um, that is also like an electric shock that can be triggered by chewing or by uh, something touching the face. The ways that we treat it are a bunch of different ways. Um, the most important to us is to identify the type of pain, right? And also to uh, look at different medication options with your doctor, whether they're antidepressants, anti-seizure medicines, um, whether they are uh, anti-spasticity medicines. Some people do need, need opioid medicines uh, to help their pain, but that I generally refer to the care of a pain specialist. Also, there are interventions or procedures that can be done to decrease pain if needed. In terms of what you can do, working on coping mechanisms is very important. Addressing any stress, depression, or anxiety related to the pain is also very important. And then other types of interventions such as physical therapy to help sometimes spasticity as well as massage acupuncture and biofeedback may be very helpful in decreasing pain and finally THC um, there's a lot of research that still needs to be done but again it's important to sit down and talk with your doctor about the best plan for you all right and so with that I am done today uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in again I'm Dr. Mitzi Joy Williams I am a board certified neurologist and MS specialist my goal is to engage um, educate and empower people living with MS and those affected by MS to become an active part of their healthcare team and also um, to engage in the clinical research process to help us work toward finding a cure for multiple sclerosis. Um, please follow me on Facebook, like my page if you haven't already. Please also follow me on Instagram, um, Twitter, and LinkedIn, uh, Dr. Mitzi Joy, MD, M-I-T-Z-I-J-O-I-M-D. And also, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. So I'll have uh, some of these videos, I post them on my YouTube channel if you wanna review them. Um, and also I'll have some really awesome new content coming up. Um, I've got some special announcements coming up in the next couple of weeks. Everyone's been asking me where I'm going uh, since I've left the MS Center of Atlanta. I will still be in Atlanta practicing and seeing patients. So I've got a, a, a really cool announcement coming up soon about where my next move is. Also, I am working on finishing up my first book um, about multiple sclerosis and you'll be hearing more about that in the upcoming weeks and hopefully we'll have a book launch in early February of next year. So 
thank you guys so much for tuning in and following me. Um, I'm Dr. Mitzi Joy. Have a wonderful evening and I will see you all next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Have a great one.